is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Right, there he is, locked and loaded and ready to go. Are you uh, taking judo with Tua? <laughs> no, I'm afraid. I'm afraid I am not. I was. Uh, I was listening to you discussing uh, decoupling in the last segment, and I'm sitting here wondering if I shouldn't. If I should maybe decouple myself from the Chicago Bears. I'm just not sure how this uh, this trade oh, down no thing is going to work. Fields trade crap. Uh, like, where's this coming from? Like, I don't understand this. Like, the kid. You know, one of the I I I I, sh I think he's a lot like uh, Hertz. He's super dedicated, works hard, and he wants to be better. Like Hertz, my concern with him going into this past season was accuracy. Can he cross right. that threshold? Like for me, Lamar Jackson has never gotten there, never will be there, never is going to be that guy. It just is not in him. OK, uh, for me, uh, Kyler Murray has it, but he doesn't have the work ethic behind it. He's not willing to do the things you need to do as a leader to become that guy. And so he'll ad lib and play all that bullshit, which is a lot of the stuff <laughs> that Lamar does. Whereas Hertz has honed his craft in, has gotten better and better and better. And this year he improved his 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 accuracy. I know Justin has to get there. Did you watch him at Ohio State? Did you watch him against Clemson get his kidneys just pummeled and then comes back and throws a money ball? There's something there, dude. There is that it factor with this kid. It's way too soon to, to give up on somebody with that much ability that you can still mold. Let me tell you something. If I'm Brian Dable, instead of paying Daniel Jones... How about I'm it? I'm going after Derek Carr or, hey, Chicago, are you that stupid? Yeah, I'll give you a pick for Justin Fields. Let's go because you're dying to get rid of him. So, you know, you're not going to be asking for a ton because you obviously want to get rid of him. I, I Where is this? Yeah, I, I, I would say I don't think it's really happening. Um, I think it's a pretty wild rumor. You've obviously you've you've invested, you know, seasons in developing Justin Fields. And I think everyone can see uh, that he has some traits that are at the top of the position in the NFL right now, right? Um, his best throws are are phenomenal. They're like on the level of you know Trevor Lawrence and the best throws that we've seen from anybody in his draft class. So that's not really a worry. I think Jalen Hurts is probably the you know that's the best case scenario comp at this point. But Hurts has gotten so comfortable playing from within structure, and he's so comfortable with the you know dozen or so designed carries that they're going to give him every game. Um, that is uh, that is just a perfect. It's an ideal comp for a Bears fan for Fields. Um, I'm also not like I'm. I'm just not. There's a level of uncertainty with uh, with any incoming rookie right and and i'm i would say that i am less certain about these quarterbacks than i have been uh about several classes in the past like last year i was pretty certain nobody was going to work out and nobody did work out right and i don't think we're really seeing that and and the year before i was really bullish on on a handful of guys and i think you've seen it with trevor lawrence at least um uh, I, I was I, a, I, I was a kenny pickett guy I'm a little bit well. I'll tell you the I, thing. Uh, I love, and we may I have talked about this bro. before. The, I love his mock. Yeah, I watched. I watched him every year in the ACC. He has it. He has I, it now. I get that. I will just not, say, but I think that was a great gamble at the back end of the first round. I, think, I will I just say that watching that watching Kenny Pickett's um, film from his final year at Pitt just made me want to draft Jordan Addison. Um, I, I like I thought Jordan Addison was the star in that equation. I I I hear you that that you know Kenny Pickett is willing to make uh any throw. I don't think that any moment is too big for him. Um I get all that. I don't and he got know, better and he good. got better as the year went sure. on. He, yeah. he he improved. He's he's playing do. he's just playing in a trash offense too. Like um right. I the fact that Matt Canada did not leave uh and was not asked to leave is is one of the most astonishing things to me. And I get that Mike Tomlin is like loyal to a fault. Um, I, I just thought it was shocking. I thought it was absolutely shocking because that was probably the most, you know, for a, for a team that has a lot of talent, that, that was one of the most boring offenses, uh, in recent memory to watch. So I don't, I certainly don't yeah, put it all. I don't even George, need it. Outside of George Pickens, there aren't a, a lot of like real studs. 
All well, they didn't do anything got- with George Pickens, right? Like George Pickens is obviously like a, a freakishly talented receiver. He didn't see double digit targets in any game all season. Like that no, was just dumb. No, I, and he's also raw. He's also raw too. He's not fully developed yet, but brother, you can see. You, you know, like DK Metcalf came into the league pretty raw and it didn't stop Seattle from throwing to him, right? Like you could you could do a lot with guys who who don't necessarily run every route in the in the playbook. Um Did you see that leap by DK? In the, oh, in the NBA All Star Game, absolutely that, hilarious. Yeah, that was that was crazy, dude. Like, wow, we replayed that video on the show like eight times because it was just amazing how high that guy was jumping, brother. Wow, yeah, bre- what a freak. breathtaking athlete, incredible. Yeah, athlete. immediately. I, I love, like, by the way, that he'll throw. Out. I love that he'll throw himself into a race with like world class sprinters. I love that DK will take on any challenge. He's he's one of my favorite. He's one of my favorite players in the league. Any anyway, I'm not like that was a really long way of saying that I'm not I'm not brimming with confidence over, you know, I like CJ Stroud. Um I I, I sort of like Bryce Young. I I I worry a ton about um I worry a ton about his size and maybe that's just like an old man thing to say. And you know, I, I shouldn't be worried about it, but man, if he, if he comes in at like five ten, are we, are we sure? Cause there's, there's just not that many guys that have been outrageously successful at, uh, at the size that, that, uh, you know, where he might measure your thoughts on finally it's official, even though he's been linked to the dolphins for over a year now, but Vic Fangio finally gets hired. Yeah, love it. It's uh, we we were talking about this you last week. You, it you, is you're a Bears fan, so you had him there. Yeah, it is. Um, he's a great um, you know, position coach coordinator. It is. He's he's probably a little bit overmatched as a as a head coach, right? But that's no like no no fault to him. Um, there are guys that are just like cut out to to be um exceptional coordinators. Um, I think it's a I, I think it's an easy move. I think it's an obvious move. Um, I think it's a great landing spot for him. Uh, uh, you know, team with a fair amount of talent, um, fun, fun division, all that. Um, I, yeah, I think it's an absolute win, a clear win. What are you guys going to do at running back? Let's, let's get a good running back to Miami. I, I don't think though, I don't think they'll spend, you know, uh, in fact, somebody was talking about Saquon Barkley and I said, that that's not, that's not, uh, Chris Greer's track record. They don't spend big money on backs. They don't spend high picks on backs. Uh, I actually got and, a lot. I thought they got a lot out of Mostert and Wilson last year. Like when and Wilson I think, was healthy, he was great. Yeah. I think that they'll try to, I think that will be the end all be all is that they'll try to bring those two back. And then if they can find somebody in the back end of the draft, uh, then I can see them drafting somebody else for the future because obviously Wilson and Mostert aren't for long term, but because they know the system so well. And, and, and you saw when they had um, Chase. Edmonds last year and they had to trade him away to Denver he did not fit the system and he could not not at all you could tell he was thinking too much and and because he ran outside zone not inside zone and all that kind of stuff so it was kind of a a change of pace for him yet you saw Mostert and he immediately played well and then when you inserted Wilson after the trade it's like he was here all season long because yeah he understands the offense so I think they're going to go in that direction again. I think they're in the perfect world. They bring back those two guys and then maybe draft a guy to compete with Gaskin for that third or, or, or Ahmed for that third spot. And then, you know, you kind of move on. I think they're more focused on fixing the left guard and the right tackle more than anything yeah, else. See. They've got Hunt at right guard. They've got Connor Williams at center and they've got Teron Armstead at left tackle. So I think they're focused on making sure they can fix the guard and the right tackle and the swing tackle because of Teron Armstead's injury history. You've got to have somebody that's pretty decent, ready to go for Teron Armstead. So I think that will be a priority to have a pretty decent tackle as that swing guy for Armstead. Yeah, I think I think what you're saying makes all the sense in the world, obviously. And you don't want to you don't want to park. I, I think history has taught us that you don't want to park a ton of money at the running back position, right? You don't want to you don't want to have to be a player in in a running back market that includes guys who are going to look for the kind of cash that uh, that Saquon look is going to see. Out of Dallas, Zeke is done. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah, what, seven, like what, what, what are we seven, six, seven years into a career now, right? I thought it's almost, well, and that's not that's not unusual, right? Like that's a good. I run. know that's, Zeke, what, that's what I was about to say that 
we're at a point now that even giving a second contract to a running yeah. back is risky. So oh, you're almost better risk, off. Yeah. Right. So you're almost better off drafting a guy in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh rounds and play out his one year contract. And then maybe, hey, yeah, dude, we'll give you another year or two or whatever and plan ahead because it's almost stupid to give players, you know, double and triple contracts now at that position. And that just doesn't happen anymore. Those days are yeah, dark. Yeah, I, I certainly I certainly agree with all that. There's there's not more than, I don't know, four or five backs in the league. Derrick Henry is yeah, yeah it's like, that you need to treat as really separate and apart and that and that you can actually like I don't even you know, I don't even some some guys that were at the top of the scoring list last year I don't even know if they're in the club right like it's right. it's it's a pretty you short list of freakish. guys that I would give like if, yeah you have to be a Derrick Henry freak that you're like well bro they don't build them like that like yeah and you also fuck. you also have to not have a ton of mileage too because the incomes the incomes quick for a lot of these guys right like you can Although be that guy had that guy was worn out out well he wasn't worn out the normal human being would have been worn out in alabama because yeah. nick ran him into the ground and yet he has come to, he's so freakish that even in the nfl brother he can still be a bell cow yeah he, he to me is actually he, i was just talking about this on the on the yahoo fantasy podcast yesterday with matt Harmon. um i i think derrick henry is going to be one of those one of those really interesting draft discussions next year because i feel like it's one of those situations where like in your hometown league, um, perhaps more casual players, everybody's going to be like, oh, Derrick Henry, he's an absolute star. He gets 30 carries a game when everything goes according to script. Of course, I want him. He's a rushing champ. He's great. And then like fantasy experts are going to be trying to get ahead of the decline for Derrick Henry. Right. And they're going to say, OK, he's aging. He's had some mileage. He had the foot thing a couple years ago better to be you know too early than too late on a player so i'm gonna fade him and i feel like we're gonna push him into the second round in a lot of in a lot of industry drafts and that just feels that just feels stupid to me because he was he was good at the end of last season he he would have played 17 games if he needed to right they were able to sit yeah. him for a game that was inconsequential um he's still he's still a punisher and i also think that like i think that when he when he actually does decline, I bet it's going to be a pretty soft landing that looks kind of like, you know, you remember when Eddie George was no longer efficient, right? And he right. was like 3.6, 3.7 yards per carry. But because of the way he used him, you hardly notice the efficiency in fantasy because he was still piling up yards um, in the aggregate and he was um, and he, he'd score like a dozen touchdowns. Right. Like so I think that's what the decline is going to look like for Derrick Henry. And that's probably still going to be a first rounder. Uh, you look um, overall at what's going on with uh, Jalen Hurts contract. Do you expect it to go smooth? Because I kind of think it will go smooth completely compared to the Lamar Jackson mess that they have going on in Baltimore. Yeah, I I mean honestly I feel like Lamar really needs somebody talking to him. You know, I I I get the the notion of not having representation and not wanting to give a huge chunk of change to an agent or anything like that, but I, I like I can't believe they haven't they haven't come up with a number that works for both sides, right? Because you've you know, you, Lamar at this point is uniquely valuable to the Ravens and the Ravens are kind of woven into what Lamar does. And Lamar is kind of woven into what the Ravens do. And it's not as simple as just, you know, he's not like your traditional pocket passer. So, you know, he's got, he's got skills beyond that. So it's not as simple as just flipping him to another team because another team has to rebuild around the idea of having Lamar Jackson. So I, I can't believe that hasn't been settled. I, I think, I think Jalen hurts is really reasonable. I, I think he's, you know, obviously I think, I think the Eagles agree that Jalen Hurts needs to get paid as an elite quarterback too. So I, I doubt they're that far apart. I don't, I don't think it would, I can't imagine it would be contentious. They do have a lot of guys they need to sign and they, so they probably need to sequence this correctly. And I, I just sort of view Jalen Hurts as somebody who will work with them as a partner, knowing that he's going to get whatever it is. I don't know if it's $45 million. I don't know if it's $50 million. The cap goes up all the time. He was, he was as good as anybody in that Super Bowl. Like he's great. I, I just, I think he's going to get paid and I think this is going to get worked out. Um, I, I would imagine that it has to happen in a, in a certain order, right? Because they have so many people that they got to pay. Did you see AJ Brown on this podcast? Talk about his boy who's right next to him and Jalen hurts sitting there with the hat. Um, uh, apparently that's what the article says. 
And yeah, so, listen, if I'm if I'm AJ Brown, I wanna I want I want the next, I don't know, six years of my career to be spent with Jalen Hurts. I want I want their primes to overlap perfectly and I get it. I absolutely get it. Did you see what he said on the podcast? On um, about uh, contract? Listen, listen to this. Listen, listen, I love Philly. And I'm about what I'm about to say. You do not pay this man. Just ship me off wherever he finna go. It's over. Wherever he finna you, go. Package deal me <laughs> with you. Listen, so you talk about pressure? How we get it done. Get it done. <laughs> listen, listen, I love it. There you go. I love it. So, uh, just, uh, I, certainly wish, I certainly wish the Bears had a receiver of the same caliber who would swear allegiance to, to Justin Fields in that way. Yeah, well, listen, you traded for A.J. Brown too, right? So... Yeah. You know, it's uh, look at the whole Stefan Diggs situation in Buffalo now. You know, there's some tweets coming out now, and they're wondering is he unhappy? And and he's been very emotional, and so it's kind of one of those deals. And AJ Brown kind of already went through this mess, you know, in Tennessee. And it's like, okay, well, I finally found a quarterback. I, I, I need to stay with this guy. Uh, yeah. I need to make sure that I'm here. And by the way, Howie Rosen was going to sign both those guys to long term contracts and have them grow old together. Because I mean, you're talking about two freaks, is what they are. Yeah. And AJ, AJ Brown is just like DK Metcalf and a couple of those kind of guys that are just you, you, you can't measure physicality like that at that position. That 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 stuff just doesn't grow on trees. I you know I know that saying? Stephon Diggs had the had the eruption on the sideline, uh, you know, late in the season, the playoffs, whatever. That like I feel like stuff like that just gets so overblown. Um, so much of that happens in sports. Um, and it's, it, that's, that's one of those that, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I played a high level sports or anything, but I played it long enough to know that sometimes you just blow up at each other on a sideline or, you know, yeah. in a, in a huddle and it's over, right? Like it's one, one of the great things about the way people relate to one another during a, like a, a sporting event. It like that can happen. It's, it's so not a big deal. Um, dudes yelling at each other on a sideline is just, is just not even a thing, right? No, I, I expect uh, I expect that to go really smooth. The Lamar Jackson one, I, I just get a feeling that they're going to tag him and he's not going to want to play for the tag. And I think it's going to get ugly and contentious between the two because I know they're not going to give him the contract he wants. And I don't think anybody would be willing to give him the contract he wants unless you want to be that dumb and, and put yourself on the hook for a guy that is really, you know, not a good passer, and he gets injured a lot because he has to run the ball in order to be effective, and that's that's a real problem, man, for me. So I, I just think I that certainly, this I certainly respect any worse. play. I respect any player who sort of bangs the table about getting guaranteed money, though. I will say that because I, I feel sure. like, and I don't know, I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's the union, I don't, I don't know who to blame exactly for the fact that oh, the Browns. There's, that there's so well, yeah, 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 with the with the Watson contract, but I mean, just generally across the league, so, like it is, it is outrageous that there's so little as a percentage of overall salary uh, uh, money spent that that so little of it is guaranteed in the NFL, right? In the in the sport where these guys need it most. Um, so I, I, you know, I I respect anybody with leverage who who stands up for it and tries to get as much guaranteed money as they can. I just it, it's I, it's hard to believe that nothing has come together between that team and that player because they're, you know, they are wedded right now, right? Like they are, they, they're really difficult to, to separate at this point based on the way the Ravens have built and the way that, uh, that again, that Lamar has sort of been woven into the fabric of that team. They, they, by the way, need a receiver. Um, you can't, we can't have another season where we're counting on like Rashad Bateman to be the number one or for a tight end to be the number one. Cause like, I like Mark Andrews, but I don't, you know, I don't think Mark Andrews is Travis Kelsey, and I don't think he's. I don't think he's. But that's the strong. offense. The offense yeah. is not to throw a lot of passes to the outside because he's not necessarily accurate. That's why they keep it intermediate. That's why they keep it short. That's why they keep crossing routes, and the tight end gets the heavy bulk because it's higher percentage passes uh, overall. Th this is the reason why I think you'll have to trade for one, but or or draft one. But you're not going to ever have free agency, free agents say, oh, yeah, no, I'll go play over with Lamar, who never throws the ball to me. And I think that that, you know, in Hollywood Brown, who's not a franchise guy, but right. he was your best receiver, at least on the outside. And when he says, I just didn't feel a part of the offense 
And I think I think that's why Greg Roman left. To be quite a guy, honest, a guy like that is really well paired. I think Lamar, he wants by the way, somebody who somebody who can and... just get deep because obviously, obviously Hollywood Brown, like he dropped a bunch of balls over the years yeah. too. So he's not he's not somebody who should necessarily be doing a lot of talking on his on his way out the door because um, he he whiffed on a bunch of opportunities. But you do need somebody like that who can just get deep because Lamar's got a big arm and he can he can put yeah. it out there for you. Yeah, I you know yeah. as you were as you were talking, I. I don't know if we'll ever see it, but I, I think it's at least an interesting thought exercise. There, there have to be teams that have toyed with the idea of just always moving on from quarterbacks after the first contract, right? Because um, you know, we talk about it all the time, how the the greatest advantage you can have in the NFL is to have a good quarterback on his rookie deal, right? Not sure. not commanding forty five million dollars, fifty million dollars. I, I just I just wonder if at some point we're gonna, you know, because like. Unless you think you have Patrick Mahomes, like right now there's only one Mahomes in the league, right? There's some other great quarterbacks, no question about it. But unless you think you've got one of those dudes, one of those like, I don't know, three to, it might not even be more than three guys who who are true, like elevate the franchise. We're Super Bowl contenders every year because I'm on the roster. Unless you think you have one of those guys, maybe you should maybe you should just uh, play rookies, right? Maybe you should just play people who are on deals that, that offer you exceptional spending advantages at every other position. Um, I, I I don't know. We've never seen a team do it. I don't know that we'll ever see a team do it. It's really hard to walk away from guys like, you know, look at the Daniel Jones situation. Look at, you know, at some point, Justin Herbert has to get paid uh, by, by Tua himself. Like, it's hard to walk away from guys that have a fair amount of success. But I just wonder if, you know, in a league where Mahomes is just going to is just going to be a pretty dominant player for the next decade, if, if teams don't think about taking that approach. It, it, I, I mean, boy, you better be really skilled at nailing the yeah. right quarterback after another. I mean, the last guy I remember doing something like that is Ron Wolf. Outside probably, of that, you, yeah, right, oh yeah, you like you probably got to draft one every year, or at least every I, other year, right? You've got to, you've yeah, got to. You know, shots one, at, I don't know if you know this. I've told the story many times. One off season, he had Favre, he had uh, Kurt Warner. Mark Brunel and uh, the guy he traded to New Orleans. Uh, uh, he had a whip of an arm, had a shoulder injury. Oh, God, I'm forgetting him now. Anyway, training camp ends. They cut some guy named Kurt Warner, who then goes on to the Arena League and bag groceries and then ends up in St. Louis. He trades uh, the quarterback uh, to New Orleans that I'm I keep forgetting his goddamn name now then he trades Mark Brunel to Jacksonville for a fifth rounder and then goes and draft Matt Hasselback who then he <laughs> trades in a fight between Seattle and the Dolphins Dolphins once that offered the highest was a second rounder and Holmgren offered the first rounder right and so Holmgren ends up getting Hasselback and Hasselback has a really good career even takes him to a Super Bowl uh one year and everything you know overall so that's the last guy that I saw do that. And then he then he drafted like Matt Flynn and was able to trade him for, you know, uh, to to Seattle and Seattle gave him a big contract. Yeah. He only had like a couple big of deal. games he was, and he wasn't any good, but it just shows you because that guy drafted him. Everybody looked at it differently. You know what I'm saying? And so. The last guy that I saw, oh, Aaron Brooks was the name of the quarterback that he traded <laughs> New Orleans. Which, by the way, Aaron Brooks is very important to the history of New Orleans. So for all of you out there, here's a little education. So Drew Brees becomes a free agent. He's deciding between Miami and New Orleans. As you can tell, we're very good with heartbreak and, and quarterbacks. Because we lose on Hasselback and then this yeah. one. And so... The problem was that the Miami doctors were more comfortable with them going with Culpepper and the knee than 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 Brees and the shoulder. Well, the New Orleans doctors were already experienced with a, a shoulder injury that was similar, not exactly to Brees, but similar with Aaron Brooks. So they were comfortable going on with it because they had a history with a recent quarterback that had a oh, that's I, I actually don't remember that part of the story. That's that's super interesting. I remember the off season generally, and I remember right, um, right, because you know. yeah, people don't look deeper into it. And then what, 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 yeah. why, why did their doctors do it and their doctors didn't? 
And that's because these doctors here had never really crossed that bridge like in like in in baseball, oh rotator cuff this oh okay dude we we we've gone through this a hundred times we know in football that was kind of new to you oh my god you got a rotator cuff oh no right. he's got, he doesn't have a strong arm as it is oh my god this that and so then they took the chance because Aaron Brooks had a shoulder injury that was similar to it and so they felt like they could take the gamble because they were more comfortable with it you know so there you go so that's the last. Ron Wolf was the last guy that I remember, you know, that could really draft quarterbacks. Didn't, and by the didn't way, didn't expect was, to be talking Aaron Brooks today, by the way. Yeah, that right. Yeah, of course. Uh, and and that was his philosophy, by the way, was that he even if he had a quarterback like he, you know, Tom Ted Thompson working under him learned right away. When he took over, he went and drafted Aaron Rodgers and Rodgers had to wait several years before they getting to the same point. Now, enough of the drama. We got to move on. So, you know, we now know what Jordan Love will become 15 years from now. Drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm I, like if I'm the Giants right now, there's just like and, and Daniel Jones really wants 40 plus million dollars. Yeah, I like, Daniel Jones had a wonderful season, but I'm 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 starting over a quarterback. <laughs> right? like I, I just told I just told Matt Verderam, I'm going Derek Carr. Yeah. I mean, I. Uh, dude, why am I going to give you? I'll give a better quarterback the same money, and I think I have a better chance at winning. And by the way, if Brian Dable did what he did with 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 Daniel Jones. Wow, I'm looking forward to see what he can do with uh with Derek Carr. By the way, you also stick it to the Jets because I believe sure, if you're sure. the Jets, okay, I'm saying this as a Dolphins fan. I want you to, I want you, I need you to sign Aaron Rodgers on that wall. I need him on that wall. I want him on that wall because that'll go perfect with all the stupid drama you idiots have had over the years. And the moron will probably leave in a year or two. And so you're going to get screwed. You'll give up all those picks, all that money. Why do that? Go, go get Derek well, that, that would like, That would really be the worry. Like once... Once we have a guy who's, you know, openly discussing the possibility of walking away from the game in, in consecutive off seasons, right? Like, how long is it really going to be? Are you going to get five more years? No, you're not going to get five more years out of that guy. There's no chance. I just, right. I just need Gary. Underrated, underrated song in Van Halen, Fair Warning. I got one foot <laughs> out the door. Okay. All right. So, so one true. foot out the door, that's not a good thing. You know that Halen song, huh? Absolutely, absolutely true. Oh man, I'm a child of the the late '80s. I I, I know many of them. Yes, <laughs> that's an underrated song. It's like making movies in that in that song in that album. It, there's a couple of those uh, songs in that album that are kind of like under the radar. You got to like really listen to the album, not just hey, I know Unchained and Fair Warning, and so this is love. Okay, great. You knew all the videos. Fantastic. <laughs> all right. yeah. It's like, you know, it's, I, I get you, bro. I, I got what kind of Halen fan you are. Okay, good. You know that kind when of you, stuff. All right. When are you headed uh, to the combine, Big O? When when is the Tuesday. when is the bus roll? I'll be there out? Tuesday okay. through uh through Saturday. Fly awesome. back Saturday uh after uh the big night on Friday, because it's usually a big media night on Friday where uh you know a lot of people are hanging out in one bar, a couple hundred media members pretty much from across the country. So it's actually a pretty good time. Uh, you get to talk to a lot of people. And for me, like, well, the good thing is nowadays I actually get to see my guests. But over the years, it was always, <laughs> oh, dude, I was talking by phone and text. Hey, it's good to meet you. Good to see you finally, you know. Now things have changed with StreamYard. This allows us to actually see each mm -hmm. other. You know what I'm saying? But that's kind of what you do there. You get to catch up with, uh, with a lot of people. So, I'm, 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 dude, I haven't been there in three years because of the, yeah. the pandemic. So. And I, I didn't go last year because I didn't think it was all the way back. So this year we're we're all as uh as um um what's uh what's uh, as uh, John John Wick would say, you know, people been asking me if I'm back. Well, I'm thinking <laughs> I'm all the way back. And so yes, we're all the way back. So there you go. Fair warning and John Wick references on the show. <laughs> and Aaron Brooks Nuggets. There you go. That's yeah. what you get here on the program. Absolutely, Blake. You can't you can't prepare for Aaron Brooks talk. No, you cannot. You cannot. All right. Tell us uh, about about uh, Yahoo Sports and what you're working on this week and weekend. Well, we just released a new episode of the Yahoo Fantasy Football Forecast. Uh, Matt Harmon and I went through the running back landscape, and we are also oh, ramping up. 
You're not doing baseball. Yeah, we're like ramping you? up baseball coverage. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say I've got a starting pitcher preview coming out uh, at the end of the week. I've got, I've got a piece out right now talking about the rule changes and what they may or may not mean for fantasy baseball. So, fantasy baseball is back in a big way. Uh, myself and PNL draft right Jazz Chisholm, baby. That's all we got. Just draft Jazz <laughs> Chisholm and Sandy Alcon- Alcantara. I'm Although I think it's it. Alcant- Alcantara, but whatever. But um, take them both. Take them both. <laughs> Take them both, baby. I'd My guy's it. Edward Cabrera. That's that's who I always get late. Okay. There you go. All right. And follow him on Twitter at Andy Barons. Andy, as always, much love, my brother. Appreciate you immensely. Thank Thanks, Vigo. Appreciate you. You got it. There you go. The great sports girl. Eight great locations. Look above me. That's right. The Doral location is open. Monday, they've got the $7 single smash burger. Tuesdays, they got the $2 tacos. Chicken, beef, fish. And Wednesdays, folks, the kids, today, they eat free with the purchase of an adult entree. So you're looking to save yourself a little money, feed your kid, feed yourself. You buy the entree, kid eats for free. Come on, man, Sports Grill. That's why it's great for friends. It's great for business. It's great to hang out with the family. Great food, great fun. And by the way, their sauces, you know, they're legendary. I mean, legendary. I... I, I can eat special grilled wings every day of my life. Okay, those things are just, I never get tired of special grilled wings. But I know a lot of you love the buffalo. I know a lot of you like the Miami Heat, the Blackberry, the barbecue, the Dali. You can take them home with you now, folks. It's amazing. Go to sportsgrill.com. Check out the nearest location to you. Got eight beautiful locations. So check out the location nearest you and the Kendall location, by the way has milkshakes every Monday with rock and roll music playing all night long, baby. Sportsgrill.com. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.